Hello! Since this year, 2014, is drawing to a close, I figured, why not do a list of my top 11 favorite movies to come out this year? So yeah, here's the list, and enjoy. Number 11 on the list is Tusk which is a movie directed by Kevin Smith, who, of course, directed films like Clerks and Mallrats and Chase and Amy and Dogma and Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. Yo, know, any directed films like Red State. Yo, know, uh... Tusk was a very, very bizarre movie, which most people didn't like. Like, this movie was a major bomb in the box office, but... I liked Tusk, you know, I mean, I liked it, but I can completely understand why people didn't like it. And even though I liked it, this is probably my least favorite out of the movies I put on this list. So, it's my least favorite of my favorite films to come out this year, if that makes any sense at all. You know, basically, Tusk was a very bizarre mix between horror, comedy, and drama, but the way it balanced these genres out was very bizarre in the sense that it really didn't balance them out at all. Like, there were points in the movie where it was disturbing as hell, and then there were points that were funny as shit, and then there were points that were actually quite dramatic, you know, and it was very bizarre in the way it balanced these genres out, you know, uh, but I liked it really because of how bizarre it actually was, and the movie has the stupidest premise on the planet, yet... I don't know, I enjoyed it because the way I looked at it is, I kind of looked at it as more of, I felt like Kevin Smith was trying to make a parody on movies like The Human Centipede and stuff like that. You know, I mean, it's a dumbass premise, but I don't know, I enjoyed the film for what it was, but I can completely get why people didn't like it. Number 10 on my list is The Purge Anarchy, which is a film that I was genuinely surprised with. Now, this is, of course, the sequel to the film The Purge, and I actually think it's an even better film than the first one, because my problem with the first one was I thought the first Purge movie had a very interesting premise, yet it didn't really do much with its premise. It was really just more of a slasher film. Yo, know, this movie does a lot more with its premise and you know it really shows how this purge is how this purge affects society in this universe that these movies take place in and it really explored this world a lot more you know so i enjoyed this film a hell of a lot more than i did the first one and you know i thought the film was entertaining as hell i liked the characters and it's nothing groundbreaking break in by any means like this isn't going to win any awards or anything but i still thought it was a very entertaining movie and as a sequel i thought it was even better than the first one so number 10 on my list is the purge anarchy Number 9 on my list is a movie that, I'll be honest, I probably wouldn't have seen if it wasn't for the fact that my little sister really wanted to see this movie. And But that movie is The Lego Movie, which I genuinely enjoyed. Now, I have a 10-year-old sister, and she really wanted to see this movie, so I promised that I'll take her to see it. But when I saw this movie... Yo, know, I genuinely enjoyed it, and in my opinion, the best kids' movies are the kids' movies that have something in them that adults can enjoy as well, and I think this movie definitely has that. Yo, know, I enjoyed the Lego movie a lot. Not just is it a great kids' movie, but it's actually a genuinely funny comedy as well. You know, so I enjoyed the Lego movie, and that's number nine on my list of my favorite films to come out this year. Number eight on my list is another kids movie, and that's Big Hero 6. And I loved Big Hero 6. You know, this film is, ba is a Disney Pixar movie that's based on a Marvel comic book series from, I think, like the 90s, I believe. 
Uh, now, I never read any of the comic books, so being somebody who hasn't read the comics, I wasn't really familiar with these characters, but even somebody... As somebody who wasn't really familiar with the characters that this movie was based on, I still really enjoyed this movie. You know, I thought it was not just a really good kids movie, but also a really good superhero movie as well. And I thought the villain was interesting, and when you find out what the villain's motives are, I thought it was definitely very interesting. So, yeah, I definitely recommend Big Hero 6 if you haven't seen it yet. Number seven on my list is a movie that I think is technically considered to be a 2013 movie, but it didn't come out in the United States, which is where I live, until 2014, and that movie is Under the Skin. Now, Under the Skin was a very interesting movie. Basically, it's about an alien in the form of a human woman, played by Scarlett Johansson, who preys on male hitchhikers in Scotland, like the whole movie takes place in Scotland, but it it's a very interesting movie and it has a very surreal, almost dreamlike atmosphere to it. Very similar to David Lynch's Eraserhead. I'm not saying this is a movie anything like Eraserhead, but it has the same kind of feel as Eraserhead did. You know, it's a it's a very interesting movie. You know, so I definitely recommend Under the Skin. It might not be everybody's cup of tea, but if you like those surreal kind of uh, almost dreamlike type movies, then I think you would definitely like this movie. But yeah, number seven is Under the Skin. Number six on my list is Godzilla, the 2014 reboot of the Godzilla film franchise. Now, this was a very polarizing movie for people. There were people who loved it, people who hated it, and people who thought it was just okay. Now, I personally loved this movie, but I recognize that this movie had a lot of problems. Now, probably this movie's biggest problem is the characters. The characters in the movie are very underdeveloped. And the thing is, though, this movie was trying to be like the original Godzilla movie. And the original Godzilla movie wasn't really so much about Godzilla. It was really more about the human characters, and it was about how these characters are dealing with this threat, which in the original film was Godzilla. So this movie tried to be like the original Godzilla film in the sense that it was a giant monster movie told mostly from the human's perspective, which was which I was all for that. That was one of the reasons why I was so excited to see this movie, but at the same time, though it does focus a lot on the characters, the characters in the movie were very underdeveloped. Like, the movie, it needed more character development. Yo, know, and also the story for this movie was very contrived, and I know it sounds like I hated this movie, I'm just really pointing out the problems that this movie had. Because despite my problems with this movie, I still thought this movie was entertaining as hell. Yo, I loved this movie. I mean, the film had a lot of problems, but I was able to look past my problems because I still thought it was a very entertaining movie, and, you know, even though I thought the characters were very underdeveloped, I still didn't hate these characters, though. I just wanted to know more about them, you know, and also, it was, it's a very, very well-made movie. Like, even if you don't like this movie at all, you can't deny that this isn't a well-made movie. Like, Gareth Edwards... You know, he's definitely a very good director. Even if you don't like the movie, you can't tell me that this wasn't a well-made movie. And also, the, you could tell that this film definitely has a heart to it. Like, you can tell that these filmmakers definitely had a love and respect for this franchise. So, yes, the movie had a lot of problems, but... I still enjoyed the hell out of it. So, number six on my list is Godzilla. 
Number five on my list is Captain America The Winter Soldier, which I think is an even better film than the first Captain America movie, and I still really enjoyed the first one, but I happen to like this one a lot better. And a lot of the films set in the Marvel Cinematic Universe have definitely had a lot of comedy to them, but this film takes a much darker route than the other films in this franchise have, and yes, I do consider the Marvel Cinematic Universe movies to be one franchise, you know, but, uh, you know, this film definitely takes a much darker route than the other films in this series have. Like, not just is it a great superhero movie, but it's also a great political thriller as well, and it actually has quite a bit of social commentary in it, and it touches on a lot of issues which are going on today. You know, like, the villains of the movie are more or less a stand-in for the NSA. You know, I really enjoyed Captain America The Winter Soldier, and if you haven't seen it, definitely check it out. Number four on my list is another Marvel Cinematic Universe movie, and that is Guardians of the Galaxy, and holy crap, I loved this movie. You know, like, now the Marvel Cinematic Universe movies definitely had a lot of comedy in them, and I felt like at times the comedy kind of overclouded some of the movies, even though I enjoyed most of the movies. But with this film, the comedy worked. Like, this movie was funny as hell, and it's also a great science fiction movie as well. The movie's entertaining as hell, and the soundtrack for this movie freaking kicked ass. Like, I loved the shit out of this movie, and this might actually be my favorite film in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So yeah, definitely check out Guardians of the Galaxy if you haven't already. Number three on my list is Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, which is a sequel to Rise of the Planet of the Apes, which was a reboot slash semi-prequel to the Planet of the Apes franchise. Now, not just do I think this is a, an even better film than Rise of the Planet of the Apes, but this is honestly one of my favorite films in this whole franchise. Like, I would honestly hold this up there with the original Planet of the Apes. Like, I really thought this was a really, really good movie. I thought it had a great storyline, I liked the characters, and, you know, the special effects in the movie are amazing. Sin. Yo, it really is a good freaking movie, and it's not just a great Planet of the Apes movie, but it's also a really good post-apocalyptic movie as well, and the film's actually genuinely suspenseful at times, and, you know, and actually really gripping at times, you know, it really is a good movie. I highly recommend Dawn of the Planet of the Apes if you haven't seen it yet. Number two on my list is Gone Girl, and this was an amazing movie. No pun intended. If you've seen the movie, you'll get what that little pun was supposed to be, but, uh, you know, this was a great movie. Now, when I first saw this movie, I wasn't really sure what to expect with this movie. Like, my friend really wanted to go see it because he's a big David Fincher fan, so me and him went to go see it, and... Yo, I was just blown away by this movie. Now, the movie is based on a book by Gillian Flynn, and after I saw this movie, I read the book, and I loved the book as well, and I actually saw this movie twice in the theaters, you know. I, I just thought this was a great movie, you know, and it starts out kind of like a murder mystery, but it becomes so much more than that. Yo, the film is basically kind of a satire on the media and how the media really kind of blows certain stories out of proportion and stuff like that, you know, and, you know, it's a great movie, and the acting in the movie is phenomenal, especially from Roseman Pike. I 
think I'm saying her name right. I'm not sure if I am, though, but she steals the show in this movie. She was amazing, no pun intended, you know, but it's a great movie, and Ben Affleck also does a good job in the movie, and the movie even has Tyler Perry in it, and I actually, and I'm not the biggest fan of Tyler Perry, but I loved his character in the movie, you know, and the film also has a lot of humor in, in it as well, and it's actually a very bleak and depressing movie, but there is some dark comedy in the movie, but the comedy in the movie doesn't feel out of place, like, the comedy in the movie fits very well with the whole movie, you know, like, it doesn't feel out of place at all, you know, so, you know, I highly recommend Gone Girl, it's... You know, it's a great drama film, it's a great murder mystery, and it's a great satire on the media. Yo, know, I highly recommend Gone Girl, and I recommend reading the book as well. Number two on my list of my favorite films to come out this year is Gone Girl. And my favorite movie of the year is The Babadook. Now, The Babadook is an Australian movie, which I don't know if it got a mainstream release in Australia, but here in America, it only got a limited release, but I was fortunate enough to be able to see this movie in a theater. This movie was playing at a theater not too far from me, but uh, this movie... I loved this movie. This is by far one of the best horror films to come out in the last five years, in my opinion. But it's not just a great horror film, it's also a very good drama film as well. Now, on the surface, The Babadook appears to be a story about a mother and her child being terrorized by some kind of supernatural creature, but it's actually much deeper than that. It's really a story about a woman trying to cope with the loss of her husband, but also trying to deal with her son, who has a lot of deep psychological and emotional problems, and you realize that this woman also has a lot of psychological issues as well. Yo, know, and it's a creepy and unsettling film, like, this film is unsettling as hell, but it's also very moving as well. Yo, I just loved this movie. This is by far uh, the best horror film to come out this year, in my opinion, and it's my personal favorite film of the year. I loved this movie, and the film, it did remind me a lot of movies like The Exorcist and The Shining, and it even reminded me a little bit of the first Child's Play movie, but that's not a bad thing, though. You know, like, the movie does seem to take elements from those movies, but the movie takes elements from those movies, but definitely makes it its own. You know, and I loved the movie, and... And to be honest, I think studios really need to be back in more horror films like this because horror is such a disrespected genre, even by its own fan base, you know, and I really, I want to see more horror films like this, and even if you don't like the movie, and that's okay if you don't like the movie, but you got to at least respect what this movie is going for, because you could tell that Jennifer Kent, who directed this movie, you know, she genuinely wanted to make a good movie with this, and she wasn't just making it to make a quick buck, but unfortunately, a lot of, like, mainstream horror films now are... You know, they seem to just be made to make a quick buck, but you could tell this movie was genuinely made with a lot of heart. You know, you could tell that Jennifer Kent genuinely wanted to make a good movie with this. You know, so I loved The Babadook, and it's my favorite film of the year, and I highly recommend it. So yeah, that's it. That's my list of my top 11 favorite films of the year. I hope you enjoyed the list. I hope you uh, agreed with some of my opinions. And even if you didn't agree, that's okay. Uh, and feel free to leave down in the comments what your favorite films of the year were. So, yeah. Bye.